flow as a term was uh, actually defined by a guy called Mihaly Cheek Sent Mihail. Um, uh, it took me a while to learn that one. And um, in 1975, and uh, really he defined it as uh, a state uh, where we're fully immersed in something that we're doing. There's a, there's a real energy to it. There's a, a positive emotion. It's energizing. Uh, we seem to do things natural, naturally. And, and we have incredible abilities when we're in that. We perform really well. We learn really quickly. Um, and uh, it's a highly effective state. We're not judging ourselves or others in that state. We're just in flow, hence the, the terminology. Um, there's, a, there's another book, actually, that was written um, reasonably recently called Stealing Fire, and, and um, based upon the Flow Genome Project, which was all studying flow. And, and they looked at flow um, in all sorts of um, ways. They looked at flow w with the Navy SEALs when they're in flow doing whatever the Navy, Navy SEALs do. They looked at flow in Google at the senior executive level. They looked at flow um, when people are on psychedelic drugs. Um, they looked at flow when people were meditating. And, and they really were defining it as the same thing. Is it's an altered state. They call it a, 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 a non-ordinary state of consciousness. So it's a different state of consciousness to the one that we normally operate in. And, and the way they define it in, in four characteristics uh, were, were these at the bottom here. When we are in flow, things are, there's an effortlessness to it. Things occur easily. We don't seem to have to try. They seem to occur naturally without us worrying or thinking too much. It just sort of happens. Um, there's a timelessness to it. You ever had that experience where you've been in flow and then you look at the time and you're like, well, goodness, where did those two hours go? Because we're in a, non we're in a different state of consciousness, um, our prefrontal cortex is switched off, which is the one that thinks about and is aware of time. So time actually disappears in this state. And, and there's a selflessness to it. Our focus on ourself, our ego, uh, drops away, and, and there's a selflessness to the state as we, as we enter this, um, this feeling, this experience. And lastly, there's a richness to the experience. So it's really, uh, it's really quite an enriching experience. It tends to be positive and energizing, and, and uh, people enjoy it. Now, if we look at what's actually going on in, in the brain um, at at that time. So actually what's happening when people are in flow is, um, they call it transient hypofrontality, but basically what that means is that the prefrontal cortex is deactivated. And that's the part of the brain that is focused on self and focused on uh, being logical and rational and trying to work things out and being intellectual and, so, and the self-talk in the head. That's the bit that sort of switches off. So it's like you're going into some sort of autopilot mode. Um, chemically, there's an abundance of chemicals that are kicked off in the brain when, when you get hit this, this state. So things like serotonin, um, anandamide, um, neuroprenephrine, um, dopamine are all produced. And actually, that's part of the really great feeling. That's actually what psychedelic drugs do. Um, but actually, the flow state is, is, is doing the same thing. It's, it's automatically producing chemicals that give us this uh, positive energy and this positive feeling. And what's happening from a brainwave perspective when you're in flow is most of the time, your, your brain is operating in, in the beta state. And beta state is, is somewhere between 12 and 40 hertz of the frequency that brainwaves are working. When you're, when you're in flow state, actually the frequency of how the brain works is it drops to between alpha and theta states. So your, your brain frequency is operating at a much lower level, four or five hertz. Now, if you've meditated or, or done yoga, you, 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 you could sort of imagine that you, you, that's what you're doing is you're calming the mind and you're operating not, not just from a calmer place, but from a more effective place in, in many instances. And um, 
the great thing about this state is that when you're in this state, the capacities, and maybe you explored some of these things that are available to you, um, are really powerful. So you can be highly productive. So if you're preparing a presentation or a proposal, or if you've got to get a load of calls done, um, you can be highly focused and effective in this state and not distracted. Um, um, you can be creative. So that experience that you might have um, when you're in the shower and you come up with a great idea, or you go out for a run. I, I don't know if anyone else does this, but sometimes you go out for a run and you have to take a notepad with you because you come, you come up with like five really good ideas or thoughts that have come up al along the way. Well, that's, that's because you're operating at this different frequency. So the, the mind can be extremely creative and um, really sharp as well. So it can learn faster in this state. So actually, th there's all sorts of studies on this. Um, uh, in, there's an advanced brain center over in California where they did some work with some soldiers. And what they found is when they got them into flow state, they were... They were teaching soldiers to learn to use um, um, weaponry. And they were taking them from novice to expert. And they, when, when they, wh whatever they did to get them into flow state, when, what they found was when they got them into flow state, they learned to go from novice to expert with weapons uh, twice as fast as otherwise. So the capacity to learn and the speed to learn, uh, again, is dramatically improved. And of course, self-expression is available in this state. Actually, when, when the prefrontal cortex is, is engaged, we can get caught up in the self-talk in our head and we can become a bit more self-conscious and worrying or, or thinking a little bit too much, a bit too intellectual and so on. And uh, we have access to our intuition. So um, we're picking up, uh, there's neurotransmission in the, in the gut there's actually, you know, we've got three brains, they, uh, they say. So we've got the brain here, but the heart and the gut are also brains. There's neurotransmission going on between the three of them. And when we're in this state, we access more capacity from the brain to pick up some of the elements from the heart and the gut. Um, and then there's also all sorts of superhuman qualities. And, um, and I... Um, Oh, connection. I, I missed that one. So, connection. Um, when we're in this state, you know that experience you have that when, you, when you're down the pub and you end up in a conversation with someone, maybe you've known them a long time, or you've just met them, and then there's this incredible connection, and the conversation is flowing, and you just really connect, and you feel um, you're not judging them, you're, not, you're, you're just in flow. There's this ability to connect amazingly with people when we are not caught too much up in our thinking. And I just show this uh, photo. You, you probably would have read about some of these scenarios. This, um, this is a lady called Charlotte Heffelmeyer, who uh, was a 19-year-old that um, uh, found her dad trapped under his truck in, in America somewhere. So he'd been working on his truck, and it had fallen off the jack or whatever it was on. And uh, she got awarded some incredible award because she saw the situation. She actually lifted the truck off of her father to, to save him. Um, and and there's, there's various examples of this. And really, it's another example of flow state. Because if you spent too much time intellectually trying to work that out, you'd be going, oh, no, what am I going to do now? I'm, I'm not going to do it. But um, there's, there's various superhuman qualities that are available to you the more you access your own flow state. So one of the questions then is, how do, how do we get into flow? How do we, how do we access flow more? And I'm um, going to give you various answers on this over, over um, the next um, 20 minutes or so. And the, and the first answer is, well, yes, you can do techniques to help you. There's various techniques that can, can really help. So. Um, well, uh, eat, eat healthily, have lots of sleep, don't drink too much, all helps you access flow more easily. Uh, be, be well prepared, helps you. Um, we had um, um, 
we had a fencer on our on our um, one of our programs. Uh, he was he's quite a serious fencer in the UK, uh, not not someone that makes fencing or puts it up, but one of those type of fencers. And um, he 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 was massive on preparation. He had all these rituals and stuff, and and he said it really does help, but actually it doesn't guarantee flow. It doesn't guarantee flow because sometimes he'd do all that preparation. And, and be amazing and it would help, and other times it, it wouldn't at all, and we'll, we'll come on and look at that in a bit more detail. Positive self-talk, visualization, you can do all those sorts of things and they do help. Um, some of the work around flow says, well, if you have clear goals and you have a clear focus, you know what you want, and even if you've got a type timeline, you might experience this if you've got a proposal to write. If you know it's gotta be in by a certain date and a certain time and you haven't got much time, then it sort of knocks you into flow state because you're sort of forced to, to, to get on with it. So some of those things can certainly help. And then there's also all sorts of techniques that are fascinating to help you access theta state when you want to access your creativity. And I don't know how much you've, you've played with this. But um, uh, meditation is, is, is a good one. Going out for a run. Now, you can go out for a run and just go for a run, or you can actually go out for a run to be in theta state to, to ask your mind to come up with ideas. A and it does. Theta state also, uh, by the way, is... I, I don't know if you're one of these uh, people that lies in in the morning, probably not when you're getting on a plane to come to Dublin, but um, theta state, um, when you first wake up, you're in, you're in theta state. So if you're dozing in bed for, you know, so I, I specifically do this, where I'll, when, when I have the time, I will, will lie in bed for 20, 30 minutes uh, in this theta state. So I'm awake, my eyes are closed, uh, but, but I'm, a, I'm, I'm awake, but I'm very sleepy still. And it's an amazing time to access ideas, to work on something, to come up with ideas, to work through something that's causing you some problems. It's incredible what the mind can produce. You can do all sorts of things. You can also do, I don't know if some of you have heard of binaural beats. Again, it's another technique, um, putting different frequencies in, in each ear to, to knock you into theta state. And again, you can do that specifically to help you generate ideas. So all of those things are techniques that can help and, and do help. And then, there's, and then there's another method also that I'm gonna go on and talk a little bit more about, which is understand more about thought and how it actually works. So what I'm suggesting to you is that flow state, as I, as I talked about earlier, is actually a natural part of the design of a human system, of the human psychological system. So I'm suggesting to you that it is, it's not something actually we really need to get into. It's really that we need to get out of our own way and it's then automatically available. And there's one thing that gets in the way that stops us from, from being in flow. Does, does, can anyone give... Stress? Stress? Any, any other thoughts? Self-doubt? Self Fear? Fear? Yeah, all, all of those things, but, but really it's thought. It's thought that gets in the way, that causes the stress and the fear, that knocks us out of the potential to be in flow. So thought comes along in the head and says, oh my goodness, yeah, but this is gonna be, there's high stakes here, or this might not go well. It's thought that's, that's coming along and knocking us out of what we could be in other ways.